And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Today we're going to a drink of that holy wine. Wash us with fresh water, wash us bright as snow. Wash us with fresh water, wash us bright as snow. Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and be cast to the lives of God. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. We may be armed with weapons of self restraint through our Lord Jesus Christ to decide to live and reign with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading. A reading from the person of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, Fill your car with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is there before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as a man sees does God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. In the same way Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel, 
But some were sent to Jesse. The Lord has not chosen any one of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? And Jesse replied, There is still the youngest, who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to them. He was ruddy, a youth handsome to behold, and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, There, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rests upon David. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. With your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. <clears throat> and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness. Rather expose them, for it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned? This man or his parents, that he was born blind. Jesus answered, Neither he nor his parents sin. It is so that the words of God <coughs> might be made visible to him. We have to do the work by one who sent me while is its day. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spared on the ground and made clay with the saliva and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So he went and washed and came back able to see. His, his neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to see and beg? Some said, It is. But others said, No. He just looks like him. He said, I am. So they said to him, How were your eyes open? He replied, The man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and told me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went there and washed and was able to see. And they said to him, Where is he? He said, I don't know. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on a Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, He put clay on my eyes, and I watched, and now I can see. So, some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a sinful man do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, What do you have to say about him? Since he opened your eyes, he said, He is a prophet. Now, the Jews did not believe that he had been blind and gained his sight until they summoned the parents of the one who had gained his sight. They asked them, Is this your son who you say was born blind? How does he now see? His parents answered and said, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. We do not know how this is now, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age, he can speak for himself. His parents 
said this because they were afraid of the Jews. For the Jews have already agreed that if anyone acknowledged him as the Christ, he would be expelled from the synagogue. For this reason, his parents said, he is of age, question him. So, a second time, they called the man who had been blind and said to him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He replied, If he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know is that I was blind and now I see. So they said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already, and you didn't listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? They ridiculed him and said, You are that man's disciples. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses. But we do not know where this one is from. The man answered and said to them, This is what is so amazing, that you do not know where he is from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if one is the power and does his will, he listens to him. It is unheard of that anyone ever opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he would not be able to do anything. They answered and said to him, You were born totally in sin, and are you trying to teach us? Then they took him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him. The one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord. And he worshipped him. Then Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see might see, and those who do see might become blind. Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not also blind, are we? Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you would have not seen. But now you are saying, We see, so your sins remain. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Deborah was a woman living 
in a man's quarter. Jacob outshone his older brother, Isaac, and gave him the most insignificant in his father's house, rose up to become a great warrior and liberator of his people. David, the youngest of Jesse's sons, fits right in that pattern. By traditional standard, these limitations should have kept these people from raising up to positions of leadership in Israel. But God uses a different method of selection. He places an emphasis on how a person thinks and acts, not on that person's place in their family or society. As he told Samuel, he looks in the heart, not the appearance. Even today, God is looking for people with pure hearts, people who will be faithful and obedient. He is looking for people who are willing to be formed by Him. King Saul, David's predecessor, had torn away from God. But in David, God found a man with a soft heart and willing spirit. God isn't looking for his mothers, the workers, the most beautiful or the flashiest person. He is looking for people who are committed to him and who strive to model their lives after his teachings. We are God's anointed ones. He has blessed us and filled us with his grace. May we rise up today and tell the Lord that we want to serve Him and honor Him with our lives. Lord, give me the desire to follow You and the strength to help build Your church. Let us renew our trust in God with a profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. The God who not made consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. For all God's people that we recognize our blindness and repent, so Christ may heal us. Let's pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For national and local representatives, that they consider the long-term effects of their laws, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are physically or mentally challenged, that they and their families face life with courage and compassion, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who take their blessings for granted, that they learn generosity of spirit, 
We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those preparing for the Easter sacraments and their sponsors, that their faith, nourished by this community, grow deeper each day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the community of St. Margaret Mary, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Now let us add our own intentions in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. <clears throat> our offertory song is song number 311. The King of Love, song number 311 in your brown seasonal missalettes. The King of Love, my shepherd is, whose goodness fails me never. I nothing lack if I am his, and he is mine forever. Where streams of living water flow, my ransomed soul he's leading. And where the verdant pastures grow, with food celestial feeding. Confused and foolish oft I strayed, but yet in love he sought me, and on his shoulder gently laid, and home rejoicing brought me. In death's dark veil I fear no ill, with you, dear Lord, beside me. Your rod and staff my comfort still, your cross before to guide me. You spread a table in my sight, your saving grace bestowing. And oh, what transport of delight from your pure chalice flowing. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We raise place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal glory, O Lord. Pray that we may both faithfully hear them and present them to you as a fitting for the salvation of all the world, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We lift them up to the Lord. give thanks to the Lord of God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Of our freedom of our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, <coughs> Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the incarnation, He has led the human race that walk in darkness into the realms of the faith, and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin, through the waters of regeneration, to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures heaven and earth 
sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the hope of angels, cry out and without any acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the Father of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift we pray, by sending down the Spirit upon the night then before, so they may be gain for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Tell this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the shadow of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. How did we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember the Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together, we trust our hope their our vision and all the care. Remember also our brother and sister who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in the mercy. Welcome them into the light of the faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed birth in many of God, with the blessed apostles and all the same, perhaps please you through our aid. We may learn to be called to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through the Son of <coughs> Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, Amen, Amen. Of the Savior's communion and form by divine teaching with their to say, Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray for every evil. Righteously grant peace in our days, that by the hand of the mercy we may be always free from sin and safe in all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostle, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look now all our sins, have <coughs> the faith of your church, and righteously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the signs. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the name of God. Your Him takes <coughs> away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the Sabbath. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of God Christ give me safety for eternal life. Amen. <clears throat> 